Hey guys, my name is Michael Watson and I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual one chapter at a time. Today we're going to be looking at drum racks and if you want to follow along, this is chapter 18, kind of a middle section in the Ableton Live manual. So you guys are probably familiar with drum racks, I'm going to try and make it a little bit more interesting than just the boring basics, but um, have a look. So a drum rack here is a little bit different to your other instruments in that it's got this thing over here, it's this little grid and it's called your pad view. You've also got this input output section over here. If you can't see the section, just go to the left of your drum rack and make sure this IO is on so that you can also see your mixer section over here. And actually just in general, these little shortcuts over here hide and show various components of your drum rack. So basically drum racks are a collection of different samples. They don't have to be drums, but they're typically used for drums and you can trigger them and make beats with it. Um, I just pulled a random drum rack out from here, so you can go to drums over here and type if you're looking for like say acoustic, I always write it with two C's, you can, you can turn preview off of here. So you can just pull one out. You can also make your own by filling empty samples like this with specific samples by going to samples over here and then you can choose, you can type in like kick in the search pad, search bar, or you can just pull through and again with your preview on, you can flip down with your keyboard. Okay, so uh, some of the less obvious things. In your pad, it's got a name. <laughs> the name is descriptive typically of the sample that's in it. Uh, so like snare acoustified over here, and that's an acoustified snare. And open, HH -H is hi-hat, open hi-hat. And if you hover your mouse in the bottom of here, so it's empty now, but it's called your status bar. So just keep your eye over here. And if you hover your mouse on the specific pad, it tells you which sample's in there. And I can also suggest different sounds. So it's got my GM suggestion open hi-hat. Okay, you can also mute specific pads. So if you've got a whole drum loop going and you're not hearing something, maybe it's muted. So just make sure it's not muted. You can also solo things so that that's the only one you'll hear, which means you won't hear anything else if you trigger it. You can also enable hot swap over here, which enables you to just quickly jump through different samples and try them out. Um, your preview needs to be on here. Otherwise it's not really going to work. And Q is the shortcut for that. Okay, thanks for being patient. Let's get to the more interesting things. This is your input output section. So you've got your chain over here. This refers to your different drum sample. Well, it actually refers to this whole pad. If you double click on the pad and you can put specific effects only on this single pad over here. However, make sure you drag it in the right place. I'm going to, I've got an auto pan over here. And um, you can drag it. Now you need to drag it right here. See this light blue line? If you drag it over here, it's going to go onto every single sample because basically this here shows the end of the chain. It's like kind of brackety. And this is kind of a new chain. And you want it to be only in this little sample. You don't want all the samples to be rooted to it. And if it's after this darker gray line, all the samples are going to be rooted to it. Beware, guys. It's so easy to misdrag and then troubleshoot and be like, why? What's going on? So just take a bit of care in the beginning of the process. Okay, what else can I tell you? This is super cool. So this is your chain and what I just showed you with dragging this device, it's like I'm dragging it into this specific chain. Instead of trying to drag it in that thin little line over here, you can just drag it on there. Okay, I'm just going to command Z again, take that away. Okay, so that's your chain. This play button over here is your preview. This is your receive button and it says here A sharp 1. This means whenever I hit this specific note, the A sharp in the octave 1, so that's like three octaves below middle C, uh, I think, could be wrong, um, but it's somewhere, it's pretty low down on your keyboard, then I'm going to get this note. You can change it. You can click this drop down and if you actually want a different note higher up to be the trigger note, you can set it to D5, which is like really high on your keyboard. And every time you hit D5, which is now going to be way up here, see this little gray dot here? That's going to be your new triggering instrument. And my A sharp one is now empty because it's not triggering anything. So again, just command Z to undo. You can have two notes pointing to the same samples. So I can take this and do A sharp one. And now when I hit A sharp one, it's going to trigger both these samples over there. It's also going to say multi in this pad which means there are multiple samples that are being triggered from this one drum pad. If it's got no samples in it, all you're going to see is the note B1 
and they're going to be no names, no samples, no nothing. And for your normal kind of single chain, this is kind of what you're going to see is your name. And when you click on it, you can see the device at the back of here. I should have probably mentioned in the beginning, we are in device view, guys. So if this is what you're seeing and you don't know where we are, sorry, I should have told you in the beginning, is just drag your mouse to the bottom and toggle from your MIDI view to your device view. Okay, then you've got your choke. This is super cool. So if you are... I'm just going to put that to none. How do you, what the hell is a choke group and how does it work? So you can put specific samples in the same choke group like I have with these two here by just hitting this triangle and choosing the same number for both of them. And all the samples that are in the same choke group are going to choke each other when they play. So I guess they're all like attention seekers and limelight hoggers. So this is great for hi-hats in particular because in a live setting when you play your close hi-hats and then you play a loud hi-hat and close the hi-hat again, it's going to choke the resonance of the hi-hat. The hi-hat's not going to keep ringing as you play your low hi-hats. So that, I mean your close hi-hats. So this is like a closed hi-hat. This here is an open hi-hat. You hear the sustain is a bit longer. The tail of the sample is longer. So I got a little loop here, open hi-hat, closed hi-hat. I'm going to play it to you without these choke groups on. So to disable the choke group, put them in different choke groups, I can just choose a different value over here. Or if all notes trigger the sample, then choke groups also not going to be active. Don't worry about that. That's just a little detail I wanted to point out. So they're not in the same choke group right now. This is what it sounds like. The open hi-hat keeps ringing even though the closed hi-hat's sounding. But if I want the open hi-hat to stop as soon as the hi-hat closes... So... The second sample keeps chokes the tail of that. So I hope that I've made that clear. You don't just have to use it with hi-hats, obviously. There are some really cool creative ideas that you can do this with. For instance, put a vocal sample in here. Um, and you can actually choke the vocal sample. Why don't I quickly do that? There are tons of vocal samples in Ableton. I'm just going to drag a random one. And without the choke group. Oopsie. So, I mean, just have fun. Imagination is key. I'm going to control Z again. I want my... I do not want that vocal. That was a complete fluke that I happened to click that dodgy sample. Uh, so it's about that. Okay, um, play. So this play over here, you can click and move it up and down. Basically, it'll change the pitch of your sample. So they're all kind of set to C3, but if I make it like really high, well, it's hard with a hi-hat because it's already quite high, but if, if I drag it down, you know, it slows it down because it's stretching the sample. This is actually really cool. I love that. Okay, and enough of with choke groups. I'm having way too much fun here. <laughs> We are going to go to this section over here, and this is your mixer section, so you can change the volume of all your individual pads over here. You can change the volume, you can change the pan. If I wanted to come up my left thing, my right headphone. You can solo it, you can hot swap it. Then this audio too, okay, you can also route it to a send track. So now to do that, just scroll to your left and I want to go back to these shortcuts. Just enable your return track as well. And then this new box over here opens up and you can drag an audio effect in there. Hot swap, you can go away. Uh, always the cathedral reverb. Lol. And so now what you can do is this return track, you can, with this audio 2 tab, decide for it to go to its rack output. So at the end of the rack. Or you can send this return track to another return track over here. But now what happened when I put the sample over here, the send A box came and basically now I can send all my samples. I can give them individual levels of send to this cathedral reverb now. If I want more of it. And none of it. And this value does not impact say this one over here. There's no reverb on that. Okay, and I can add, I think, like up to 16 tracks over there. Let's add a ping pong delay. This new little send popped up over here. Send B referring to this new send, and I can choose my level. And without the send, 
Sounds very different. So these are your sins. So I've gone through all of these things and that's kind of it. The one thing I didn't tell you guys are these macro controls and that I'll be telling you in my next video. I'll be incorporating these macro controls with chain lists as well as choke groups to create an expressive drum pattern. If you missed my video on chain lists and zones and instrument tracks, I highly suggest you check it out. Just for me, it was a really cool thing to learn and I didn't actually know about it before I read about it in the manual. So check it out. And then also guys, if you are still watching, well done. I am um, recently went to New York to perform. It was really, really cool. I took a couple of vloggy videos and I haven't actually edited them yet. But if any of you guys are actually interested in seeing, let me know. Like, I would love to share my journey with you, but I just don't want to bombard this channel with stuff that you guys aren't interested in. So, if you guys are interested in seeing, let me know. You've been very quiet. It's making me lonely. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. I hope you get creative with your beats and your choke groups. And... Have fun learning.